Marami po mga sales yung isang book na nung araw naging sikat hanggang ngayon yata marami pang bumibili nun. How to Win Friends and Influence People. Marami po kasi mga tao, they equate success with influencing people. When you can make people buy what you want them to buy, when you can make them say what you want them to say, when you can make them look what you want them to look, then you have influenced them. Then according to the world system, you have become successful. So we have to beware, Christians, because there are many forces out there wanting to influence us. Napakarami mga tao, hindi lang sila nagnanais na tayo ma-influence, kundi nagpapakadalubhasa pa sila sa pag-influence ng iba. So there's somebody out there who's trying to get you, who's trying to influence you, and this can work against what God has in mind for you because God is a perfect plan and God is a perfect design for each one of us. But others are trying to frustrate that plan. So beware. Today we're going to discuss about this. Be your own person. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to worship you through songs. To express our love for you, our affection, our gratitude, our admiration, our awe, our worship. Thank you, Father, for accepting all of these expressions. Now, may we delight you as we continue to ponder your words. Be our true speaker today. No one here, O Lord, has the right to speak to anyone of truth except you. So, kayo, Panginoon, ang tunay na mangusap. Namitin niyo pong inyong lingkod na daluyan ng inyong salita. At nawaan niyo pong katotohanan, hindi lang marinig, hindi lang maunawaan, kundi maipamuhay ng bawat isa sa amin. By the power and in the name of Jesus, we rebuke all work of evil, all plans of evil against this assembly, we destroy you by the light of Jesus Christ. And we render you powerless, crushed, and utterly destroyed in the name of Jesus. Father, let your truth prevail. Let your Holy Spirit infill us. Descend upon this place. Do your will. Speak your mind out. Bless your people. Glorify yourself. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So be your own person. Pwede nyo ba sabihin sa katabi nyo yan? Be your own person. Yan, huwag gaya-gaya. God designed the real you. Every one of us has a design. Everyone, katulad ng fingerprint, walang magkakamukha. So, walang taong magkakamukha, pero lahat ng tao reflecting God's glory. Or every person is designed to reflect God's glory. So, I was in Romans 8, 29 to 30. For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be what? Like His Son, Jesus Christ, to be conformed to the likeness of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those He predestined, He also called. So every person that accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord, or will accept Jesus as Savior and Lord, God already knew that beforehand. God does not cause us to accept or reject His Son, but because God is infinitely knowledgeable, He knows even before it happens, who will accept Him. He does not cause us, it is our free will to accept or reject Jesus. But those whom God foreknew, God predestined. Yung mga alam na niya, natatanggap sa kanyang anak, ay ginawa na niya ng isang perfect na future, isang perfect design. And what is that? To be conformed to the likeness of His Son na ang ginawang disenyo ng Panginoon para sa atin ay maging kamukha tayo, maging kauri tayo ng kanyang anak, ang ating Panginoong Jesus. So, God designed the real you. First of all, that design is based on His foreknowledge and based on predestination. After we have accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord, predestiny takes over. Kasi, tinagap mo na si Jesus as Lord, E di ibig sabihin, hindi na tayo ang Lord ng ating buhay. Doon pa lang mag-uumpisa ang predestiny. Pero hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, oh, a person is predestined to be saved, or this person is predestined not to be saved. Because the Lordship of Jesus Christ takes effect only when you accept Jesus. That's why His Lordship and the implementation of predestiny can only begin when you already have Jesus as Savior and Lord. And what is that predestiny to be like God? Remember that God created man in his own image. Therefore, the duty of man is to go back to that image that was lost in the Garden of Eden. That is our predestiny. 
That is what God has ordained for us, that we should all go back to the original perfection that was lost. Of course, nobody reaches perfection in this life, in this side of eternity, but the duty and the privilege of every Christian is to get nearer and nearer and nearer to that perfection. So God called you and me. A man or a woman of God must be the person that God foreknew, predestined, and called to be. Christians are to be their own. And in our definition today, what is to be your own? To be what God has designed you to be. Because that is your identity. Tulad na ibinigay sa atin na fingerprint, that is your identity. Katulad na ibinigay sa atin na muka, bone structure, that is your identity. No one else is like you. So you are what God has meant you to be. Christians are to be their persons, not the product of the sinful, twisted, and deformed world system. How can you be your own? Be what God designed you to be. And today, in our continuing journey to becoming what God has wanted us to be all along, what we really are, we're going to discuss six steps to be your own person. One, think what God wants you to think. You know, Satan and other men will always want you to think the way they want you to think. How does Satan want us to think? He wants us to be malicious. He wants us to be judgmental. He wants us to be negative. He wants us to be discouraging. He wants us to be gloomy. He wants us to be suspicious and jealous and boastful and proud. So how can you think the way God wants you to think? First of all, think positively. Be optimistic. But do not be foolish or ignorant or gullible to the point that we're too optimistic or that we no longer recognize real danger signs. We no longer recognize really dangerous people, but we have to be optimistic. Philippians 4, 8 gives us a glimpse into this optimism. Sabi niyan, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. It's so beautiful. Philippians 4, 8 tells us what to think of. Think about what is true. Pag hindi totoo, huwag niyong isipin. Lalo kung imagination pa lang, huwag isipin. Kumisan yung mga selos are born of, out of very rich imagination. Iniisip mo pa lang, kumukulo lang yung dugo, nagiinit ang yung tenga, at nagngangalit ang yung panga, pero iniisip mo pa lang yan, hindi pa yung totoo. Kaya ang sabi ng Bible, whatever is true, you think about it. So, kumisan, nagsususpecha tayo sa ating kapwa, Hindi pa naman natin napapatunayan, we begin to behave as if our suspicions are already true. Lumalayo na ang ating loob, nagagalit na tayo, nagtatampo na tayo, eh yun pala, imagination pa lang natin. So whenever there's some imaginations knocking at your door, you ask, is it true? If it's not true, don't think about it. We have to be ready for the machinations of the evil one. Hindi naman yung caught unprepared tayo sa lahat ng mga traps ng evil. You think about it too, of course, technically, but you don't dwell on those thoughts and you don't let those thoughts influence your behavior. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, you like to behave a certain way, you like to think a certain way, you like to treat a person a certain way, and you ask yourself, is it noble? Ito ba ay katangi-tangi? Ito ba ay kapuri-puri? Ito ba ay maganda at dakila? At sabi, whatever is right, so, alam na agad natin, I think every one of us knows what's right and what's wrong. I think nobody here agonizes na hindi malaman kung alin ang right at wrong. Alam na natin yun. So, whenever we think of wrong things, it is by choice that we do so. There are very few things that are wrong pala na hindi natin alam from the beginning. Very few. There are some. Whatever is pure. You are thinking malicious thoughts. Judgmental thoughts. Sasan natin, ito ba ay pure? Or am I manipulating people and events? Alam niyo po, marami mga tao magaling magmanipulate. 
They have a certain script and they make every person behave and speak according to that script through their machinations, through their charm or whatever it is. But whatever it is, sabi niya, it's a Bible, whatever is pure. Then you ask, whatever is lovely. Think of these things. Whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So, ang tanong natin lagi, pag meron tayo palang iniisip, is it true? Kung hindi true, hindi ko ito masyadong bibigyan ng pansin. Baka haka-haka pa lang. Bintang pa lang. Marami sa atin yung bintang kung makakilis na tayo, parang totoo na eh. Kaya yung mga napagbibintangan, judge agad. Maging sa hukuman, matagal nga bago magbigay ng verdict. Minsan mga kristyano, mabilis magbigay ng verdict. You ask yourself, is it noble? Okay, I'm thinking of doing this thing. But is it noble? Is it right? Is it pure? We have failed many times to stop and think about these things. That's why we think of wrong things. And whenever our thoughts are inclined towards a certain direction, be sure that your life will also follow that direction. Nauuna lang naman yung thought. Kaya binabantayan ang thought. Nurture pure thoughts. Sabi ng Psalm 33.5, The Lord loves righteousness. Natutuwa siya at lumiligaya siya kapag merong katuwiran. Kapag merong righteousness in our lives. So we think about such things. So remember, one step in becoming your real you, think what God wants you to think. Kasi bibigyan ka naman ni Satan ng mga alternative thoughts. Ungodly people will suggest ungodly thoughts. And even our own ungodliness in ourselves will try to surface and teach us. But remember, if you have to be what God has predestined you to be, think what God wants you to think. Then too, at ito, breakdown na lang yan. Yung think overall na yun eh. See what God wants you to see. Very often we say, the eyes are the first to leave the Lord. And it's true. Eve saw the fruit, and then later as she came near, picked and ate. Yung mata binabantayan. Binabantayan natin kung ano ang dinadapuan ng ating paningin. So, how do we see what God wants us to see? First, see the good in others. Satan likes you to see what is evil in others, what is imperfect, and what is ugly. And the Lord likes us to focus on the good in others. Certainly, there's a lot of imperfection in other people, but that's the same with us. And if you're going to focus on the imperfection, on what is not good about others, you will begin to think negatively. Then yung first natin think how God wants you to think and what God wants you to think of will become what? Betrayed. Will get betrayed. So, look. Overlook. Forgive. And pray for faults and failures of others. Sa pamilya. Sa magkakaibigan. Sa mag-asawa. Sa magkasintahan. Sa church. Ano bang unang sumisira? E di ang tinitingnan mo yung negative in others. That's not what God wants you to look at. If you're going to look at something negative, look into yourself. If you're going to look at something nice and good, look at other people. First Peter 4, 8, Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. It has never failed to amaze me, this verse. I have consulted with so many references and nobody has really given the answer that I'm looking for. Na kaninong sin ba yung natatakpan ng love? Yung sin ng minamahal o yung sin ng nagmamahal? Kasi sabi niya, love covers a multitude of sins. And I like to think that it works both ways. If I love you, I will focus on the positive and my love will cover the negative aspect in you. It will cover your sins. And yet also, if I love other people and I look at what is positive in them, that same love will cover my sins. Because if I start looking at negative things, I become sinful too. I become judgmental. I become proud. I probably become unkind. So, both ways. Love covers a multitude of sins. You want to sin less and less and less? Love more and more. The way God wants us to love. Because if we love people, 
there will be very few things that they'll do that will probably hurt us or will make us judgmental or strict. Because love covers a multitude of sin. Kaya nga kung minsan eh, mayroong nabasag na baso, depende kung sinong nakabasag para tayo magalit. Pagka love one mo, ang tanong mo agad, nasugatan ka ba? Pero pag iba, lalo katulong, ano? Makabasa ka na naman, salary deduction. <laughs> Pero pagka mahal mo sa boy, pagka anak mo, titignan mo agad kung baka nasugatan. Most of the time, it's not what people do, but who does it? That becomes important. So we should love more. See what God wants us to see. Because no matter how we try to go through life, ang bawat isang tao meron talaga yung kapintasan eh. At meron talaga yung katangian. Pag yung kapintasan ang lagi niyong tiningnan, kung meron kayong konting pag-ibig, mawawala pa. At pag nawala na yon, lalong lalaki ang kanyang mga mali. At lalo namang lalaki ang ating mga mata sa pagtingin sa kanyang mga mali. At lalong magiging miserable ang buhay nating lahat. So when you're looking at somebody else, you say, Is this God, what God wants me to see? Okay, I'm looking at someone. Is this what God wants me to look at? Or God wants me to look at something positive and nice and beautiful and pure. Another thing under that, seeing what God wants us to see, see opportunities beyond difficulties. Among a godly people, when there's a difficulty, when there's a problem, when there is what you might call a tragedy, they look beyond it and see God and see an opportunity. There's always an opportunity in every difficulty. Ang lahat tayo puyat dahil sa kasalan. At masaya naman tayo at tayo yung napuyat dahil sa masayang bagay. But tomorrow morning, Sunday, that's an opportunity to come on time. Is it not? Kasi konting-konting pagkakataon lang yung lahat tayo puyat, napaka, huwag niyo papalampasin yung opportunity na maging dakila at maging bayani. Sapagat ang kadakilaan at kabayanihan ay nangyayari lang sa mga mahihirap na pagkakataon. Kaya pag mayroong mahirap na pagkakataon, ito talaga, nakakainis itong taong ito, then this is my opportunity to be kind. Otherwise, kung mabait naman siya, I don't have any opportunity to be kind. It only follows that I should be kind dahil kind siya. Eh kung hindi na siya kind, this is an opportunity for my light to shine dahil nag-brown out. Eh kung ang liwaliwanag na, yung imunting ilaw nyo, hindi na yung mapupuna. Pero kung habang lalong sumisidi ang dilihim, lalo namang na-appreciate kahit kaprasong ilaw lamang. Kaya habang gumugulo, this is my opportunity to be calm. They have a point, I will be the counterpoint. They have a thesis, I will be the antithesis. In fact, I will be the synthesis. Meron silang kontra, kukontrahin ko yun para magbalance. Nagkakagulo na dito, nagsisigawa na, I will be calm. This is my opportunity to shine for the Lord. Nagkakapagura na, maiinit na ang ulo ng lahat. This is my opportunity to show the Spirit in me, the peace, the love. You know, when there is a difficulty, Christians should see the opportunity. Because the more difficult the situation, the better the opportunity to shine for God. Kaya sabi sa Hebrews 12.15, See to it that no one misses the grace of God, and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. When there's a difficulty, you say, I will never miss the grace of God in this opportunity. Because every difficult situation is accompanied by God's grace. Those who don't pass the test only choose not to pass. But every difficulty, every problem is accompanied by a solution. Every question has an answer. Every challenge is an opportunity to be victorious. You want to be your own person? You want to be what God has wanted you to become all along? See what God wants you to see. Kung minsan, mayroong isang tao ang nakakayamot, ang gusto agad natin, to get rid, to destroy, to annihilate, to totally pulverize, evaporize the person. You don't see the patient, the wounded person, crying out to be healed. At lahat tayo guilty dyan. Kasi nakakapangyari ang ating personal. Gusto agad natin, tayo makapangyari, tayong manalo, tayo ang mag-prevail. But see, Nasa isang taong nakakainis, there is a child or a patient asking to be loved. Can I tell you that the most unlovable persons are those that need it most. 
Kaya opportunity yun. Huwag nating palampasin. Kung marami na tayong napalampas, huwag nating palampasin pa. O kaya huwag nating palampasin lahat. Meron tayong magagawa. In our journey towards godliness, to be our own person, number three, hear what God wants you to hear. Christians, you choose what you listen to. Hindi ko yata papayaga na ang tenga ko tambakan araw-araw ng mga tao ng complaints, ng gossip, ng slander, ng mga reklamo, ng mga paninirang puri, at ng mga kung ano-anong mga nakakapabagsak ng damdamin. At ang tenga ninyo ay inyong pag-aari. May karapatan kayo na papasukin at hindi papasukin ang mga tunog na hindi ninyo ibig. Remember na hindi basurahan ng inyong mga tenga na willing tayong tanggapin ang lahat ng ipaparinig sa atin ng mundo. So that when people come to us always complaining and always with gossip, they say, excuse me, don't pollute my ear. Wala ka nang ginawa, kundi tamba ka ng mga kung ano-anong mga nakakainis na bagay ang tenga ko. Kaya kahit anong ligaya ko, pag nakausap kita, mamaya down and out na rin ako. At ang galit mo, nagiging galit ko na. Ang gyera mo, nagiging gyera ko tuloy. Teka muna, tenga ko yan, wala kang karapatan. You choose what you hear. And you have a right. Di ba ayaw nyo na ang lote nyo, tinatamba ka ng basura ng kapitbahay? Alam nyo ba na mas mahalaga yung tenga nyo kaysa sa lote? Pero marami tayong naririnig. Naririnig yung mga advertisements. Always telling you na kulang ka. Hindi ka maganda. Pangit ka. Kaya kailangan mo ang produktong ito para ka gumanda. Kulang ang iyong ganito. Hindi ka tama. Lagi na lamang na you're inadequate. You have a right not to listen to these things. Hindi nyo papayagan na lagi nyo nadidinig yung mga advertisements na yan. Hindi natin papayagan na lagi natin nadidinig yung mga worldly music that affects us. Hindi natin papayagan na may mga tao, mga chismosa, na walang ginagawa kundi bubulong-bulong sa atin. Lalapit sa'yo, sa ilang saglit, ang gagaling. Kahit hindi bumubuka ang bibig, may nasasabi. Alam nyo yun, yung sabi. Nakikita siya, ayan, dumadating na siya. Tingnan na ang dahit niya. Hindi naman gumagalaw ang labi niya, pero nakakapaglagay ng lason sa inyong tainga. Lalong-lalo yung mga may hawak na pamaypay. Oras na tinakpan niya ng bibig. May mga lasong lumalabas dyan. Dalawang ginang na naggaganyan na ng pamaypay. Naku, may kabuktotang nangyayari. Mag-ingat. Hindi nyo kailangang marinig yon. And you can direct, direct with people. Ang mga napapansin ko, tuwing darating ka na lang sa akin, wala ka nang ginawa, kundi isiraan niyang pinsan natin na yan. Huwag mo nang lasunin ang isip ko. Kung nagagalit ka sa kanya, huwag mo kong indamay. You have a right to protect your ears from pollution. Sabi ng Mark 4.24, Consider carefully what you hear. At diba, totoo nangyayari yan eh. Marinig lang natin ang complaint ng isang tao against another person, kampi na tayo sa kanya. Kung sinong unang magsumbong, siya na ang nakakampihan. Binabantayan ang tenga na yan. Akala natin kung misan, ang tatalino na natin eh. Yun pala tayo yung mga tauta-uhan na kung anong naibubulong sa atin, yun naman ang namumulaklak sa ating buhay. Kaya naman ang isang lalaki, mahal na mahal ang kanyang nanay, pero matapos marinig ang kanyang asawang bubulong-bulong ng limang taon, ayaw nang pumunta sa nanay niya. May mga ganun. Mga padaplis, unti-unti, but over time it will, what? Ripen into an evil fruit. Nai-influence tayo. Isipin ninyo, kung minsan, may napapalo kang anak. Kung minsan, may napapagalitan kang tao dahil may nagbulong sa'yo. Minsan, meron kang isang empleyado o katulong, natutuwa ka, pero eto ngayon ang isang kapatid mo. Yan naman katulong mo. Pagka wala ka, ganito, 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 ganito. Mamaya, galit ka na rin. Sometimes, without even verifying the details. Be your own person. Huwag tayong maging parang pinaglalaroan ng iba na oras na nabulungan yung behavior natin na i-influence na nila. You cannot be godly unless you are your own person. Na meron kang sariling paninindigan. Na hindi lahat ng ibinubulong ng iyong asawa, ng iyong nanay, ng iyong anak ay paniniwalaan mo agad. Kailangan tinitimbang ang lahat. Because remember that the devil spoke to Eve through the serpent. Huwag niyo naman tawaging ahas ang inyong asawa. Baka puluputan kayo niya. Diba? Pero nangyayari yun, kadalasan niyang asawa, napakalaking negative influence niyan. 
binalasan ang inyong isipan laban sa inyong mga sariling kamag-anak o minsan laban sa inyong sariling nanay. It can happen. So, kailangan binabantayan. And then number four, in our journey, say what God wants you to say. Yung mga unkind and harsh and critical words have no place in the Christian vocabulary. But remember this, Christian, are you listening? The enemy will tempt you to say what he wants to say through you. The enemy will tempt you to speak the way he speaks. And the enemy will tempt you to be his spokesperson. Never let it be. Never let it be. Kumisan gusto ng demonyo na pag-awayin ang dalawang tao, so sa'yo ibubulong para ikaw ang magsalita nung siya ang gustong magsabi. But he cannot say that. Wala naman siyang vocal cords. He does not enter the physical world. So he will need your physical body. He will need your mouth and tongue to speak on behalf of him. And you don't allow that. Meron siyang mga pusong gustong sugatan sa pamamagitan ng salita. E palibas at wala siyang boses, ang boses natin ang gagamitin. I-influensyahin tayo para oras na umandarang ating mga dila sa bawat pilantik ng dila na yan, may taong nasusugatan. Actually, you are serving the interest of the evil one. Merong taong magkasundo, gusto ni Satan, pagkagalitin. Anong gagamitin niya? Ang ating labi para pagkagalitin ang dalawang taong ito. In other words, you are serving the interest of the evil one. Whenever you open your mouth, Christian, say what God wants you to say, not what Satan wants you to say. Kapag ka merong mainit na pagtatalo o kaya merong napakahirap na sitwasyon, gustong-gusto mo nang sakta ng damdamin ng mga tao at murahin sila at magsalita at mag, ano pa, manumbat. Say to yourself, wait, is this what God wants me to say? Dahil pag nasabi natin, ah, hindi ito, hindi ito ang gusto ng Diyos na gusto kong sabihin, definitely, you are serving the interest of the evil one. Grabe ang deception. All around, there is deception. Kaya ang sabi ng Luke 6.45, The good man brings good things of his mouth out of the good stored up in his heart. And the evil man brings evil things out of the devil and out of the evil stored up in his heart. At ano pong sabi? For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. Kung anong laman ng puso, yun ang lumalabas sa bibig. Kaya binabantayan kung anong naririnig, kung anong nakikita, sapagat yan ang entry point into the heart. At pag lagi tayo nakakakita ng evil, lagi tayo nakakarinig ng evil, ang laman ng puso, evil, pagbukas ng bibig, yun ang lalabas. Natural. Para rin kung ano ang labas ng sikmura, when we throw up, that is what will come out. Ala nga namang maiba. I remember one particular time, one of my friends owned a very fancy restaurant. And there was this girl who was trying to project na siya yata a society girl or whatever. At ang arte-arte niya, at kung ano-ano mga kasupladahan ang pinaggagawa niya, eh bigla siya nag-throw up. Ano ang nakita ng mga waiter na isinuka niya? Munggo. Sabi ng waiter, munggo lang pala kinain mo kanina, ang supla-suplada mo pa ngayon. O oh, gano'n, ano bang laman ng sikmura lumalabas when you throw up? Kung ano laman ng puso, yun ang lalabas. Kaya pag nakatingin tao, laging reklamo ng reklamo, laging chismis ng chismis, alam nyo na, punong-puno ng evil ang puso ng taong ito. Kailangan ipag-pray, kailangan mahalin, pero hindi dapat pakinggan. Maraming gano'n. So say what God wants you to say. In a very difficult situation, you are tempted to open your mouth and say Lord, is this what you want me to say? Hindi naman mahirap malaman eh. Hindi mahirap malaman. Hindi lang tayo dapat pabigla-bigla. Kasi yung salitang nabitawa na, hindi na kayang bawiin. Kahit isang libong sorry ang sabihin mo, hindi na kayang bawiin ang salitang nabitawa na. Kaya dapat nag-iingat. Do not be the devil's spokesman. And do not be other people's spokesman. Marami mga tao magaling magpaikot eh. Galit sila doon, hindi nila mapagalitan. Ikaw ngayon ang gagalitin nila para ikaw magalit. 
Meron silang taong gustong pagsabihan, hindi nila masabihan. Sa'yo ngayon, ngulngul ng ngulngul. Sa'yo ngayon, bulong ng bulong. Mamaya, kung hindi nyo babantayan, sinasabi nyo na doon sa tao ang gusto niyang sabihin, pero hindi niya sinasabi dahil kayo ang ginagamit niya. Madalas yan. Napakadala. Kaya babantay natin. Teka muna, bakit ba ba ako ginagalit? Gusto mo siguro, awayin ko siya para sa'yo. Kasi nga, napakaraming tao nagmamanipulate. They manipulate others. They make you angry so that you will fight their battles for them. So that you will fight God. Yan ang gusto ni Satan eh, labanan ng Diyos. So ang ginagawa niya, tayo ang kanyang nililin lang para tayo ang lumaban. So we will fight his battle. Don't you be deceived, Christians. Kaya ang sabi sa Bible, Oh, be as innocent as doves, but be wise as serpents. Huwag tayong mga uto-uto. At sino naman ang may access na maglagay ng basura sa ating tenga at sa ating mata? Ito yung mga taong malapit sa atin. Kaya bantayan ang mga taong malapit sa atin. People make us hear and see and then say what they want us to say. Be careful. Say good, soothing, healing, comforting, encouraging words. Sabi sa Colossians 4.6, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know to answer everyone. Our speech must be seasoned with salt. In other words, yung walang lasa, walang kwenta, dapat may lasa. At hindi lang yon, yung salt stops decay. Kaya kung decay yung ang ating tang, tambakan ng asin. Parang daing, di ba? Tumitigil lang kanyang pagkadekay, pagka inaas na ng husto. Pagkulang sa asin, madaling masira. Kaya sabi, let your conversation always be full of grace, seasoned with salt. I praise God that uh, I am very aware whenever people are trying to manipulate me. Although marami pa rin nagtatagumpay, pero marami pa rin hindi nakakalusot. When people try to manipulate you, especially if you are in a position of leadership, there are some people who don't have that influence or what you might call power. So they will try to influence you so you will move on their behalf. You say, ah, teka, inuuto ako nito. Minamanipulate niya ako. At hindi kakaunti, ang nakita ko mga asawa na kung gagrada ninyo, one, flat, one, ang galing magmanipulate ng asawa. Galing, lalo ang mga Pilipina. Talagang pwede mong bigyan ng mga award sapagkat kumisa na ilalayo ang asawa sa sariling ina. At talagang pag nagmanipulate, Akala pa nung lalaki, siya pa ang may corona. Dahil habang minamanipulate ka, inuuto ka pa. Nga may, may gagawin ka, akala mo, decision mo talaga yon Pero hindi pala, bulong ng kung sino, sino. Be careful. And women, even men, if you find that you have this nature in you, get rid of it. It's not godly. We should not manipulate others. God does not even manipulate us. God even gives us free will. Do not be manipulative. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt. And then number five, do what God wants you to do. At nabanggit na natin kanina yan. Do not be the action man, do not be the hatchet man of the devil. Do not do only what you want to do. And do not be the puppet or robot of another person. Maraming ganun eh. Kasi atin sa daigdig na ito, napakaraming mga tao, yung kulang, yung strength of character, na hindi nila nabamalayan, sila'y minamanipulate na ng iba. Ginagawa na nila yung hindi nila dapat gawin dahil na i sila ng iba. So we become angry with their enemies, we quarrel with their enemies, and in the end, we fight their wars. Pinagtatawanan tayo ng evil one when that happens. Kaya sabi lagi sa Bible, be full of wisdom. Be full of wisdom. Do what God wants you to do. So whenever we're going to take a course of action, you ask yourself, is this what God wants me to do? Gusto ba talaga ng Diyos ito? O ako'y na-deceive lamang? And finally, go where God wants you to go. Why? Because God will accompany you 
Wherever he wants you to go, he will accompany you with grace, with protection, with success, with peace. Be where God wants you to be. Sabi sa Isaiah 48.17 This is what the Lord says, You Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way that you should go. So be where what God wants you to be. Go where God wants you to go. Sabi ni Lord, eto dapat ang iyong profession, eto dapat ang iyong ginagawa, eto dapat ang iyong pinupuntahan, huwag tayong magmatigas. Because the blessing of the Lord is there. It is not elsewhere, but there. So our test is, is this where God wants me to go? Marami yan. Of course, very, very literally, we should go to church. Bawat araw ay may dalang mga posibilidad Nang tagumpay o kabiguan Nang ligaya o lungkot Kaya marapat lamang natanggapin si Yesu Kristo bilang tagapagligtas at Panginoon at matapos yon ay panariwain ang katapatan at paglapit sa Kanya bawat araw o day by day. Ang day by day ay naglalayang umalalay sa pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay kristyano. Narito po si Pastor Ed Lapis sa mensaheng pinamagatang... We should go to godliness. We should go to Bible studies where we can grow. And whenever we are tempted to go elsewhere, especially when we have to sacrifice our Christian activities, you say, is this where God wants me to go? At yung mga anim na tanong na yun, napakadali na makita kung papaano tayo dapat magiging tunay na tayo. Christian, be your own person. Do not be vacuum-headed. Do not be manipulated by others. Control your thoughts. Alam niyo yung vacuum, kahit ano, hinihitit. Pag hindi puno ng wisdom and godliness ang ating mind, hihititin yan ng kung ano-ano mga basura everywhere. So make sure that your mind is always full of godly thoughts. When the devil finds it to be empty, he will fill it with his own thoughts. Do not be a captive audience of anyone. Control your sight. Choose what you will see. At this point in my life, I read many letters, but I should tell you that there are letters I do not read. It is my right not to read anything that I don't want to see. You can never imagine what kind of letters I get. What kind of indecent proposals I get. And I said, ah, kilala ko na tong letter na to. I will never read it. I refuse to read it. Why should I allow a person to unburden that person's thoughts into me? Di ba pag meron tayong gustong sabihin, pag nasabi na natin, lumuluwag ang ating loob, at sino ang sumikipang loob, yung napagsabihan, inilipat natin sa kanya. I refuse. Ko ano man ang nararamdaman mo, sarilihin mo na lang. Huwag mo nang ilipat sa akin yan. Buntot mo, hilahin mo, at bakit mo sa akin ipapahilay ang iyong damdamin? So, ganun. Hindi nyo binabasa lahat ang ipinapadala sa inyo. That's why it is very, very unethical, especially in this electronic age, to be sending messages that are unsigned. Yung mga kung ano-anong code, hindi mo kilala. It's very unethical. You have no right to enter a person's mind with your thoughts without even having the decency to sign your thoughts. Kumisa may magbibip sa akin ng kung ano-ano. Magkaganda naman. Kaya lang mag-iisip ka, sino to? Bakit mo ko ginaganito? Anong karapatan mo na pag-isipin ako sa oras na to? And so, ayan ang mga intrusion sa ating buhay. Mabuti pa nung araw, walang telepono, walang fax, walang mga beeper. Kung hindi person to person makipagkita sa'yo, hindi masasabi ang layunin. Pero ngayon, it is so easy to hide in the dark and yet be able to unload your garbage into another person's mind. I tell you this, be the guardians at the doors of your eyes and ears 
It is your basic right not to see what you don't want to see and not to hear what you don't want to hear. Do not let your mind become a blank tape na kahit ano na lamang itape ng iba po mapasok tuloy. Tanggalin nyo yung parang tenga. No taping allowed. Hindi ko pwedeng pakinggan ng ayaw kong pakinggan. Sino magbigay sa'yo ng karapatan na mapaluwag mo lang ang dibdib mo eh ipapasok mo sa tenga ko ang laman ng iyong dibdib lalo kung ayaw kong pakinggan yan. It is my basic human right not to hear what I like. I don't like to hear. And Christians, do not be the loudspeaker of others. Do not be a lip-sync artist. Alam niyo yung lip-sync, di ba? Lip-synchronization. Yung mga kumakanta kunwari sa TV pero gagano'n-gano'n lang ang bibig kasi kasabay tape. Di ba? Madalas mga tao ganyan. Bumubuka-buka ang bibig pero ang nanggagaling na sound hindi naman galing sa puso nyo, galing sa iba and you're being used. Nagli-lip-sync kayo nun. Don't permit it. Control what you say. And Christian, do not be a robot. Control what you do. Do not become an unwilling participant in many people's games. And then, do not be a guided missile or a remote-controlled machine. Control your direction. Go where God wants you to go, not where people influence you to go. You are what God wants you to be. You can be what God wants you to be. Anything apart from what God wants you to become is not you will not be you. So get real. Be yourself. Be your own person. Let us be silent before the Lord and let us review our lives. In what areas of my life am I being another person? Am I allowing another person or the evil one to twist my personality? Ask the Lord. Let the Holy Spirit finish this message and be liberated because Christians are meant to be free.